Hello everyone. So welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I decided that we were just gonna take it easy and talk about one of my favorite orchids. Now on the screen here, unfortunately you can't smell it, but on the screen is one of my favorite fowls, Phalaenopsis, sweet memory cultivar name is Echo Valley. Now, just a backstory to this plant. This is actually one of my all time favorite orchids ever. And I know it's a bit cliche, but it was one of the first orchids I had saw online when I went to um, look up how to take care of the first orchid that I bought. When I saw this orchid, I was really curious as to why it didn't look like the normal one or the normal ones that I see in the store nor the one that I purchased and then I found some videos online and found out about all these different kinds of orchids and you know a couple of years later and a hundred orchids in here I am with an entire jungle in my living room so again sweet memory was one of my first if you say wishless fowls I started this hobby again in 2020 and I purchased this plant in 2021 from a nursery in Texas called Big Leaf Orchids, which I highly recommend. Peter has some wonderful orchids. And maybe further on into my journey, we'll do an unboxing or two um, from some nurseries that I get my orchids from. Now, Sweet Memory is a very popular orchid, which is why in the beginning of the video, I mentioned that my love for it may be a bit cliche, but I don't have the popular cultivar. My cultivar Sweet Memory is called Echo Valley. The popular one is called Leodoro, which is pretty old, but they basically have a similar appearance. Leodoro is known to have a bit more of a vigorous uh, branching and be a larger plant. I, as a home and shelf grower growing under lights, I like the compactness of my plant, but boy, this fragrance, it holds nothing back. It's like a sweet cinnamony fragrance. Sometimes I feel like it smells like uh, Fruit Loops with cinnamon. Sometimes it's just Fruit Loops. Sometimes it's just cinnamon. Um, either way, when I saw these blooms, I had to have it, but that scent, I knew it was a keeper by then. And of course, Outside of, you know, the scent and the beautiful star shape of everything that's going on with the bloom, the foliage, oh, the foliage, it's just so pretty. It's a lime green as opposed to the darker color that we're used to on most of our phalaenopsis. So all these features that are coming into play are because this plant is a hybrid. Now, um, I don't want to call it a primary hybrid, which is a which is a cross of two species, but this actually happens to be just three. So it's a cross of a species called Deventuriana, which is a also a hybrid. This hybrid is a cross between Amabilis and Amboinensis. And these two plants are basically like you know, a cross between your regular Phalaenopsis, the big white, and the, the small novelty one, the tiny star shape. So the Amabilis is sort of a big white species, and the Amboinensis is one of those tiny star shaped species. Now, you, when you put those together, you get Deventuriana. Now, you cross Deventuriana with the Violacea, which is a extremely fragrant, cinnamony, sometimes purpley pink species um, that's used in a lot of these fragrant orchids. Again, that Violacea is crossed with Deventuriana, and here we have Sweet Memory. Now, another reason that I mention all these species in the background is because it helps the plant bloom all year round. I have blooms in the spring, summer, fall, winter. The plant really blooms all year round because the species in the background bloom all year round. You have some warm bloomers coming from the Violacea side 
And then the cold bloomer in the winter coming from the Amabilis side. And Amboinensis, although a warm bloomer and a warm grower, is actually known to bloom in the springtime. So we just have a mix of blooming uh, variations in this plant, which makes it super fun. I, I recommend it. And me personally, personally, I do want to go into um, collecting many cultivars and variation of this fowl. I know my name is the right path, but a fowl was my first plan. And you really fall in love with them because just like paths, they're very easy to take care of and extremely, extremely rewarding. Now, with regard to the care, I do have some videos on care, but I will touch on it. There's nothing special that I put into the care of this plant. Um, it's basically the general watering a little more when it's warm and cutting back when it's cooler. I do have, though, this plant in a mix of small bark and moss because it came in a very, very tightly packed moss setting, but I didn't want to keep um, it in a pot and all moss. So I thought small bark would be a good substitute uh, to put in as opposed to a pot, or excuse me, cup, as you see as I grow here, with all moss. Now, an interesting fact um, about this plant that I've actually recently learned is that the Violacea, the species that I just talked about that's in its parentage, it has a sister plant that's called the Bellina. Now, the Bellina is a bit lighter. It's from a different, er a different area. And back in the day, it was actually classified as a Violacea. It was called Violacea variation Borneo, indicative of where it was from, a region called Borneo, another tropical region. Violaceas are normally from the Sumatrana region, Sumatra, um, and Bolinas from the Borneo region. However, they were both considered Violaceas. So the sense on sweet memory, especially the older cultivars like Leodoro, will vary because some of them will actually have what is now known as the modern day Bellina, and some of them have the older Violacea. And with regard to the Bellina and the Violacea themselves, there are tons of different, um, I don't want to use the word vi variations because I don't know if that's proper, but there are different forms like for example, I do have a species Violacea, which is in recovery right now, but it's an indigo form. So it's much darker than how it would normally appear in its normal form. There's also a cerulea version of the Bellina, which is also darker than the normal Bellina. So again, all these different types of species and Phalaenopsis in the backgrounds of our hybrids will help them or not help them maybe, but anyway, they will affect the performance overall of the orchid. And you know, there, there are tons of them. Tetraspis is another one that's my favorite that's being changed. I know there are a couple of wrinkle catlias that are now Brassolalia catlias, you know, it's, it's really insane. But all in all, I highly recommend finding yourself a sweet memory plant or even gifting it to someone. I do know here in the States, it's a pretty rare plant to find. So finding it under $50, sometimes under $60 is a bit hard to find. That was hard to find. Sorry, my dog went a little crazy there. But again, yes, this flower may be a bit hard to find, but don't be discouraged. There are lots of other novelty Phalaenopsis just like this. I have a few in my collection, such as the Tainshin Flying Eagle or the Jennifer Palmero in the back. Tainshin Flying Eagle is a very famous Tetraspis hybrid. The Tetraspis uh, species is known to change its color depending on um, the temperature. So the flower petals will be different colors depending on the temperatures. This Taishin Flying Eagle that I have does range in color from red to yellow. I believe the more warm it is, the more red it is, the more cooler it is, the more yellow it is. And then 
again, there are different other hybrids um, that will come with different scents, different types of growing patterns, different types of colors and shapes. And I highly recommend diversifying your collection because it's it's extremely rewarding. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually put my social media handles up on the screen for anyone who wants to follow me on social media. My Instagram and Facebook do follow my orchid journey as well. I post pictures, um, maybe getting into real soon, but I do post many pictures and a few stories of my orchid journey. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.